All right, this lens has a heck of a name. HD, Pentax D, FA star, 50 millimeter, F1.4, SDM AW, and that means high definition, Pentax digital, FA, I honestly don't know what that stands for, I probably should. Star, star lineup is for the best of the Pentax lenses. 50 millimeter, F1.4, silent drive motor, all weather lens. We're just gonna call this lens the FA star 50 millimeter for this video because I want it to end someday. And that is a heck of a name to keep saying over and over again. So the, the FA star 50 millimeter is made by Ricoh. It went into production in 2018 and is ongoing. In fact, Ricoh just released, uh, well, just to me, I'm not exactly sure when these went on sale, a silver version of these lenses. And, if you have one of those, it's a somewhat rare lens as Ricoh only made 600 of them and they have a unique serial number starting at one with a bunch of zeros in front of it and ending at 600. So not only do, do you know that you have one of those 600, you know where it rests in the sequence. The typical lens uses for the FA star 50 millimeter, it's a generalist with the ability to do basically anything really well within the confines of its focal length. You are not going to be using this unless you image stitch to take ultra wide angle lens uh, photos. And I also would recommend that this is not a, uh, a, a, well, I would always recommend against cropping significantly. So I would just say, uh, you don't want to convert this into a telephoto lens by cutting out 90% of your image. Also, if you're new to this series, there won't be any test charts or situations that intentionally set this lens up to succeed or fail. The reviews are based on real world use and aim to provide images and not applicable for this review, but video and other videos that mimics how you are likely to actually use this lens. Now, the reason that there will be no video samples in this lens at review is because it's a Pentax came out lens and the K1, which is the best came out camera I have, only shoots 1080 and this is a 4K channel. I'm not going to upsample the video because that will not do justice to, it, to the way this lens performs. So everything that you're gonna see in here from this lens is a still. So your TLDR is this. This is an exceptional lens. It is absolutely worth the money. If anyone ever releases a KAF-4 to mirrorless system adapter with electronic aperture control, I will be buying that right away because this lens will be wonderful for 4K and higher res video. And if that ever comes out, this lens will suddenly become very, very popular with mirrorless users and videographers because it is a stunningly good lens offering you nothing that you can't find on Ricoh's website. The focal length and AOV angle of view are 50 millimeters and 47 degrees respectively on full frame and 76 and a half millimeters and 29.9 degrees respectively on APS-C. The aperture range is 1.4 through 16. Filter size is 72 millimeters. The closest focus is 0.4 meters, which is 1.3 feet. It is both autofocus and manual focus, and the autofocus drive is a high torque, circular, silent drive motor that uh, was developed specifically for this lens. It is very responsive and very quiet. The systems that this is available in is, are for Pentax K. Specifically, this is a KAF4 lens with KAF3 backward compatibility. It weighs in at a pretty chonky 910 grams, which is two pounds and one tenth of an ounce. This lens lets you know it's there. The 50 millimeter lens, as a general statement, is a generalist that can do most things very well. This holds true for this lens, especially. And I would say that it, this lens, the, the FA star 50 millimeter, also excels at portrait work. Now, APS shooters, this work lens will function like a 75 millimeter lens with zero distortion on your APS-C sensors. That makes this an ideal portrait focal length with a really, really good maximum aperture and the performance across the APS-C sensor from this lens is staggeringly good. That said, 
On full frame, this works well for any task you put to it. Portraits, pets, sports, wildlife if you can approach it safely, trains, again if you can approach them safely, and so forth. Name a subject that this focal length can do, and this lens will do it, and probably better than you've seen from any other 50mm lens. Nothing that I tried with this lens resulted in images that I felt disappointed by. In fact, I kept, I kept pushing off this review. I could have done it 18 months ago. I kept pushing off this review so that I could keep using this lens in pursuit of images for this video because this lens is spectacular and it is an absolute joy to use. So to that end, however you use this lens, full frame or APS-C, it will work and it will work well in basically any conditions as long as you know how to use the camera to support it. The FA Star 50mm works well in every metering mode for every subject, and it will only let you down if you do not know how to use it or your camera well. This lens, owing to the quality and price, does come with an expectation that the user will know how to handle and control it. Like Stacy's mom, this lens has a lot going on. I know, I just got that lyric wrong. Please don't comment about it. So let's unpack this lens. Now, as you can see, the lens has an internal focusing mechanism, and that's a key benefit to this lens, both for video and still users, as it makes it highly suitable for video use if you have a Pentax camera for video. That internal focusing, because only minimal glass moves, just those three internal elements, means that this lens can focus quickly and quietly because the motor also has very high torque. This lens has three anomalous dispersion elements. Okay, so that's a new type of element for this series, and I've spent a lot of time reading about lens glass, trying to figure out what that means, and not getting a great and compelling answer. But what I've pieced together is that in a nutshell, you'll notice that the AD, that's anomalous dispersion elements, are part of an achromatic pair. Every one of them is in an achromatic pair. And that's a key part of how they function. So AD glass has an important job for imaging systems. AD glass's role is to allow improved color correction in achromatic pairs. Achromat lenses correct for color dispersion. The effect, and dispersion is the effect that's seen when the sun passes through a prism and turns into a rainbow. And that occurs because different wavelengths of color have different refraction levels when passing through surfaces, be it glass, water, whatever. Now, however, an achromat lens pair, or doublet, can only correct focused light. Unfocused light coming through an achromat le uh, lens pair or lens system still has chromatic aberrations from light wave separation. So what that means is that if you have an out of focus uh, area, you're going to get color flaring. Basically, color fringing is an improper focus of the wavelengths. Uh, the, the wavelengths as they're traveling along the, the space between the back of the lens and their focus point, they are tra the, the red, the green, the blue, whatever different colors are traveling at different places. So that is what causes chromatic aberration or color fringing on lenses. It's one of the things anyway. So, okay. Anyway, back to the script. AD glass helps to reduce the amount of chromatic separation, not chromatic aberration, but chromatic separation from the light that exits an achromatic pair. And in doing so, it reduces the amount of chromatic aberration in an image when paired with a suitable and appropriate different glass type in the achromatic pair. So basically what happens is the job of the AD glass is to minimize the difference in space between, or an angle between say the blue and the red wavelengths as they exit this achromat. If, if they're properly aligned, they're not in focus because they're, they haven't reached their focus point yet, but if the blue and the red wavelengths can travel along the same, same space on their way to being focused, that will eliminate color fringing in out-of-focus areas. That's what AD glass does. So 
The magic of these elements, though, it's not solely in the glass type, but also in the physical shaping of the achromat elements and the pairing of the glass type that touches the uh, 80 glass in that, that pair. All right, so I've made a big deal of the glass, but there's way more to this lens's magic, and that's the coatings. Pentax included Aerobrite 2 coating on this lens, and that prevents light reflectance, which is the light, light reaching the lens, like the front of the lens, and then bouncing back out into outer space across all of the visible wavelengths almost entirely. Now, it's not perfect because the lens isn't invisible, but the amount of light that, that is reflected off of these lenses' coatings is almost, it's functionally nothing compared to uncoated, single-coated, or traditional multi-coated lenses. So what this means is that the lens has brighter images with less light loss coming through the system. For those of you who do video, that means an improved T-value. That also means that colors are transmitted more accurately and truly because different wavelengths are not being reflected back out into the, uh, the universe, which is part of what saps color trueness out of images as, colors, as colored wavelengths of light pass through lens systems. The coatings and their performance for this lens are stunning, and they help to give this lens the stunning image characteristics of great colors, great contrast, and exceptional sharpness. Now, as for the lens design, I did not see the named design anywhere. Like, Ricoh didn't say what, it, what type of lens this is other than a prime 50 millimeter. I will say that it looks like an Ultron design. The Ultron design is a Zeiss lens from 1950. It's in the same family as the planar, and there are some variations of it over time. Now, I say that it's an Ultron owing to the two concave surfaces that face each other around the aperture, and that two of the three of the, uh, of the couplets of the achromatic pairs to the left side of the aperture of the diagram are positive. That third one nearer the aperture or nearer to the internal focusing mechanism certainly appears to be negative based on the shaping of the lenses. Now, all that said, that's a guess on my part, and I was unable to confirm uh, from any source if this is in fact an Ultron-derived de design. For breathing from the closest focus to infinity, breathing is consequential. However, with shorter spans of focus change, such as if you had a subject at seven feet and then another at 12, and you were focusing between the two of them, breathing would not pose an issue for that scenario. So basically, these examples exaggerate breathing because it goes from closest focus to infinity, but breathing's exceedingly tolerable at, sh at uh, shorter focal length differences between your subjects. For your aperture, it's in third stops, uh, and it is stepped. That said, it can be adjusted smoothly and without sound being recorded on the camera. Will there be a jarring drop in light all of a sudden? Probably, but in third stop increments, it shouldn't be that jarring. And so, but bear that in mind, and if you're going to use this lens for video, test that functionality before you go live with it and see if you need to do something else in a shot at the same time to distract people from any sort of light, light fluctuation. The front element is stationary and non-rotating, which is perfect for camera boxes, gradient, and CPL filter use in video. The focus throw isn't stated anywhere that I found, but it appears to be around 75 degrees, which is pretty decent. Older manual focus lenses had it much longer than that, but modern lenses tend to keep that to, you know, in the 60 to 75 degree range. So 75 is good by modern standards. The focus ring, as an added bonus, uh, has slip gearing in manual focus mode. So it also an autofocus, but you really shouldn't be adjusting the focus in autofocus manually. So when you're using manual focus, this lens has slip gearing. And what that means is that you can focus to infinity or focus to the close focus point. And there's a hard stop for focus, but 
there is not a hard stop for the grip. And that means that you can hit that hard focus stop and you can keep rotating and stop your focus smoothly with video. And that can help eliminate or entirely eliminate camera shake while also giving you the ability to place a subject at that close focus hard stop. Now that should make this a very good lens for video and give you the ability to place that close focus subject at optimum focus and without having to do anything fancy like reversing the, the clip in post or making notes of things that you need to remember to do in post, you can just focus straight to that close focused subject because you can keep rotating the focus ring past closest focus. For focus damping, it's exceptional and it's smooth with an ideal amount of resistance. Focus ring play is non-existent and the mount stability is exceptionally solid. This lens really pairs up very well with whatever uh, Pentax camera you're going to put it on. So as a quick note for video, I have read this, but I have not independently verified it, though it stands to reason that the AF can be used in video with this lens. And I say that because the AF is silent. Now, apparently, if you do that, there will be a faint click sound when the autofocus starts if you are using the on-camera mic, and that would owe to the gearing engaging, the drive motor itself physically engaging. That's when the AF starts. However, there's no AF motor sound that's recorded by the camera, if even with the on-camera mic. All of that said, if you're doing this and you record your audio separate from the camera's mic, there will be no sound from the motor of this lens on your audio track at all. Sharpness is exceptional at every aperture and across the frame as well. This lens performs stunningly well, corner to corner, aperture wide open to f16. It's, it's a magnificent piece of lens design and engineering. For build quality, it's also exceptional. This lens is solid and the mechanical components work and align really well. This is a professional grade lens and it absolutely exudes that across every component. And that includes the interface, what you physically use as a photographer. It's the interface is streamlined. It's easy to use and everything on this lens is easy to understand. You could probably hand this to someone as their first lens and have them relatively quickly be able to figure out exactly what everything is. For contrast, it's exceptional. As we've covered the lens and the glass coatings and talked about it, this lens really does an amazing job of delivering beautifully contrasty images with exceptional colors. The aperture shape and blade count are nine blades that yield a very pleasing out of focus area characteristic across the aperture range. And this was something that Ricoh's engineers apparently really focused on delivering. And at the wider ranges, which is like f5.6 wider to f1.4, out of focus area characteristics are simply magnificent and really, really well suited for portrait subjects. For design flaws, it's functionally none. This lens has no distortion. Colors and contrast are amazing. I have never been able to discern any issue with any kind of astigmatism, coma, flaring. None of that has ever, ever once in a single image shown up. This lens is incredible. So to clarify one point, what I mean by no distortion is this lens has less than a quarter percent of image distortion at the image corners when focused to infinity. That's pretty incredible. There is slightly more distortion at around a third of a percent at closest focus in the image corners. And that goes from a barrel distortion, like a quarter of a percent of barrel distortion in the corners at infinity to a third of a percent ish of pincushion distortion in the corners at closest focus. Like I said, that's not a distortion amount that we can even perceive as, as people, like our brains don't, don't notice it. So functionally, this lens has no distortion. As for your balance with cameras, the lens is heavy coming in at 910 grams. For those in the US, that is two pounds almost on the nose. 
this lens needs a heavy camera behind it to feel balanced. And even then, the system's going to feel a bit front heavy. It feels front heavy on my K1, and I, I think that's the same weight as the K1 too. So uh, this is a very heavy lens. When Ricoh's engineers designed the FA Star 50mm, the team worked together to design the optics, hardware, and housing, and an interface that combined all those elements to make shooting this lens a delightful experience. They succeeded. This is an incredible lens, and I have never met its equal. In fact, it would be really hard for me to identify more than a couple of other lenses that I would say are even in the ballpark. Yes. This lens is heavy, and yes, if you hike all day with it around your neck, your neck and your arms from shooting it will be sore for the next few days. That said, the photos that you take with it will last for far longer, and they will decidedly turn people's heads if your creative vision can support what this lens can do. The work that went into this lens's design truly paid off. It's, it's magnificent. It is absolute masterpiece. The 50 millimeter FA star is stunning. It does everything well. It's a generalist that excels at each task you give it like a card shark who knows the rules of every game and how to win them all. The FA star 50 millimeter makes every other 50 millimeter lens in your Pentax kit obsolete. And it should. Given that this lens still today, three years after its release, costs about $1,000 new, it should deliver on the promise of that price. I've said in previous videos that if something costs three times as much as another thing, it needs to be at least three times as good. So I have the previous 50mm 1.4 Pentax lens as well as this one, and Ricoh sells that lens as well, new online for $350 as of this video's recording. So is the FA Star 50mm three times as good as the older FA 50mm 1.4? Easily. Easily and then some. This is one of those pieces of camera gear that I will own for as long as I am able to use a camera. Like all of Pentax's cameras, their lenses show their dedication to quality design, thoughtful interface, and a compassion and care and interest in a good user experience. Pentax gear delivers exceptionally on the tasks to which a piece of camera equipment is given to deliver a good image with good quality in an easy and intuitive manner with high usability, long-term reliability, and to provide the photographer with a wholly enjoyable shooting experience. I think that's the highest praise I could possibly ever give a lens. And you know what? Every moment using this lens, it earns that praise.